Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox. I would like to welcome you to the Sunday Book Review. The Sunday Book Review is the series where I discuss books which impact the compliance practitioner, the legal professional, and the business professional. I hope you will enjoy this episode. October 18, 2020, the Cary Grant edition. And we begin with Cary Grant, A Brilliant Disguise by Scott Iman. Born Archibald Leach in 1904, he came to America as a teenaged acrobat to find fame and fortune, but was always haunted by his past. His father was a feckless alcoholic and his mother committed to an assigned asylum when he was 11. He believed her to be dead until he was informed she was alive when he was 31. Because of this experience, Grant would have difficulty forming close attachments throughout his entire life. He married five times and had numerous affairs. Despite remarkable success, Grant remained deeply conflicted about his past, his present, and his basic identity, and even the public that worshipped him in movies such as Gunga Den, Notorious, and North by Northwest. Drawing on Grant's own papers, extensive archival research, and interviews, this is the definitive portrait of a movie immortal. Next up, we go in a little bit different direction of the great Chicago's Great Fire by Carl Smith, subtitled The Destruction and Resurrection of an Iconic American City. Between October 8th through 10th, 1871, much of the city of Chicago was destroyed by one of the most legendary urban fires in history. Incorporated as a city in 1837, Chicago had grown at breathtaking pace in barely three decades, from just over 4,000 in 1840 to greater than 330,000 at the time of the fire. Built hastily, largely of wood, once a once it began in the barn of Catherine and Patrick O'Leary, the fire quickly grew out of control, twice jumped branches of the Chicago River on its relentless northeast path through the city's three divisions. Close to every one of close to one of three Chicago residents was left homeless, and most were instantly unemployed, although the death toll was miraculously low. Remarkably, no carefully researched popular history has yet been written despite it is one the fact it is one of the most cataclysmic disasters in US history. Building around memorable characters, the likes of Philip Sheridan and Robert Todd Lincoln, eminent Chicago historian Carl Smith chronicles the city's rapid growth and post-Civil War expansion. Next up, uh, 150 glimpses of the Beatles. Through 50 years have passed since the breakup of the Beatles, the Fab Four continue to occupy a unique place in popular culture. Their influence extends far beyond music and into the realms of diverse such as art, politics, and religion. When they appeared on the Ed Sullivan Show, they provoked an endemic of horse-throated fandom that continues to this day. 150 Glimpses of the Beatle is a distinctive kaleidoscope examination of the Beatles' effect on the world around them and the world they would help bring into being. Part anthology, part memoir, and wrench by collection recollections from everyone from Tom Hanks to Bruce Springsteen This book is humorous and at times madcap take on the Beatles' role in the making of the 60s and music as we know it. We conclude with Reed Hastings, co-founder of Netflix, uh, reveals for the first time the unorthodox culture behind one of the world's most innovative, imaginative, and successful companies. In his book, he gives uh, insight into culture and how Netflix created a culture that has led the company to uh, now one of the largest media companies in America, certainly positioned for the pandemic as well as anyone. It's a fascinating exploration of a modern company and how they've pivoted to deliver to the consumer not only what they want, but in the time of COVID-19, really what they need. I know you will enjoy it. This month on 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance program, I take up business ventures. How do joint ventures, teaming agreements, distributorships, uh, franchises all come under the FCPA penumbrum? And how do you as a compliance officer deal with them? And more importantly, how are they different than other types of uh, risks that you must manage? Check out this month's 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance program sponsored by Affiliated Monitors. I look forward to visiting with you again next week.